praise the Lord. And say welcome to the United Fellowship Churches of International. I'm doing that. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the United Fellowship of Churches International Holy Convocation 2020. It is good to be here, giving honor to God, to uh, Bishop Christopher Paul, presiding prelate, and Archbishop David Billings III, Chief Apostle. We're thanking God for our candidates today, Dr. Bishop Fabian Tucker and Dr. Uh, Charles Blanks. We thank God for them. And I will be reading your hearing today, Hebrew, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse to the tenth verse. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For he, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the ordinance of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned his obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obeyed him, called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I have read Hebrews first chapter. Fifth chapter, one through ten. God bless you in the hearing of His word. wonderful opportunity for elevation in the kingdom of God. It's a very special time today because, amen, we are releasing two men of God into their kingdom ranking in that of a bishop. The theme for our holy convocation this year is pathways. 
And this is a derivative of Mark, Matthew chapter 3, where we are looking at how John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. Understanding this concept, even though one is anointed, there must be a forerunner for those that are anointed. And when we're looking at John the Baptist, he emphatically says that there is one that comes after me whose shoes I am not even worthy to lace. John the Baptist was a very unique individual in that he would allow even the diet that he would partake of to be very different so that he could maintain a posture of consecration. So as we're looking at this today, we are cutting the pathway for these two men of God that are being elevated. We're cutting a pathway for them that those that are gone before them, that they will be able to stand on the shoulders of those that have prepared the way and manifest greater works than these shall they do. So even as you're viewing today, we want you to celebrate with us in the fact that pathways are being cut all over the kingdom. Transition is taking place and even in light of that we are seeing the hand of God manifest his will. Some of you right now may be in one place or another. You may be the one cutting the path or you may be the one following the path that someone else has cut. Whatever the case may be, today we are celebrating these men of God and we are preparing them. And so, amen, I would that every person that's watching, if you're viewing from whatever medium you're viewing, if you're viewing from Facebook, Periscope, if you're viewing from Twitter, if you're viewing whatever, whatever medium that you're viewing us on, we want you to celebrate with us in the fact that victory belongs to the believer. And even though we may not be in a building, we are understanding more than ever that we are the church. And as we understand that we are the church, wherever you are, church can manifest right where you are. I wish somebody would have church with me here today. But even in the midst of that, I want you to celebrate on this official day these two candidates. We know that it has not been easy. We know that there's been things that they've had to encounter and that they've had to endure, but God has found them faithful. And so we are celebrating these men of God today. So wherever you are, we want you to know that these two men of God, we stand behind their integrity. We stand behind their name. We stand behind the men that they are. Mighty men of valor, as the scripture says, creation awaits for the expectation and manifestation of the sons of God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. God bless you. We're happy to be with you today on this, your annual holy convocation. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. And it is a pleasure and a blessing to be with you and in the house of God this morning with all of the saints. I pray that through this song, someone would be blessed, some soul would be touched, amen. And most of all, that a soul would be saved. God bless you. Gave me my hands to reach out to man to show him your love and your perfect plan. Hmm. You gave me my ears. I can hear voice so clear I can hear the cries of sinners 
but can I wipe away their tears? Lord, I'm available to you. Oh, mine will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. I'm 
you to do. I saw it is empty. I'm glory. You want me to go. My soul is empty. I say what you want me to say. I saw it is empty. I'm doing what you want me to do. My soul is empty. Hey, said my soul is empty. Yes, it is. Lord. And I am available. Available. I give everything that I have. I give everything. Oh, said my storage is empty. And I am available to you. I surrender my all. Lord, let's talk for Said now, my soul is empty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I am available to you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord. Lord, Lord, to me. Said my soul is empty. Oh, and I. Level to you. you. I'm available to you. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and say, Hallelujah. 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 My soul, that is empty, and I, I am available to you. Set my story, my story, my story is empty. I'm available, I'm available to you, oh Lord, say yes, yes. my soul is in tears, and I am available.
Amen. We are grateful again to be here in the presence of the Lord. Let me start over because we need a mic. Do we have a mic? Or am I using this? We are grateful to be here in the presence of the Lord today to do something that is very, very dear and near to the heart of God, and that is the promotion and elevation of God's people. Amen. Today, our candidates are Dr. Fabian Tucker and Charles Blanks. So we're grateful again that the Lord has saw it fit to cause them to come forth and to continue to do the work of God. So today we were asking God's hand to rest upon them and we were asking God to continue to allow his mercy and his grace to shine upon them. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Bishop to lead us in prayer. Touch their homes, touch their families. Father God, I pray a special prayer over these, your consecrators, your celebrants, God. Touch them and anoint them afresh, gracious Master. Father, I ask that you just have your way in this place. Move by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are grateful. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to ask those that are here representing Dr. Tucker to stand and those that are here representing a man bishop designate blanks to stand please. Amen. Amen. At this time, would you come? Charles Blanks to the office of Bishop. We therefore ask 
you to lay your hands on him and in the power of the Holy Spirit to consecrate him, bishop in the one, holy, universal, and apostolic church. A chosen bishop in the Lord's church. Chosen bishop in the Lord's church. And the United Fellowship of Churches International. And the United Fellowship of Churches International. Solemnly declare. Solemnly declare that I do believe in the Holy Scripture. That I do believe in the Holy Scripture. The New Testament and the Old Testament. The New Testament and the Old Testament. To be the Word of God. To be the Word of God. And contain all things. And contain all things. Necessary. Necessary. To salvation. To salvation. I solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine. I solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine. And discipline. And discipline. And worship. And worship. Worship of the church, of the church, and submit to the leadership, and submit to the leadership thereof. thereof. So help me God. So help me God. Through Jesus Christ, through Jesus our, Lord. Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today you have the testimony and have heard the presentation of those that walk closely with him. We have heard the testimony today that Charles and Fabian has been duly and lawfully designated as bishop. You have been assured of their suitability and that the church has approved them for this sacred responsibility. Nevertheless, if any has any reason we should not proceed, let this down be made known. Is it your will, I'm speaking to those that are here, is it your will that Charles and Fabian be designated as a bishop? If you would say, this is our will. This is our will. Will you uphold Fabian and Charles? If you will say, we will. We will. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us pray. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for the faithfulness of these, your men servant. Father, we thank you because we know that your hand is resting on their lives. We're asking, God, that you will continue to open doors for them and continue to make ways for them, Father, and continue to let your mercy shine upon them. I thank you, God, that favor is their portion, and Father, that they will continue to do great exploits in your church. We give you glory for this time of elevation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I will speak a line, and then your response will be, Lord, have mercy on us. And God speak all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Lord, have mercy. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Lord, have mercy on us. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days be long upon the land the Lord hath given thee. Lord, have mercy on us. Thou shalt not kill. Lord, have mercy on us. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy on us. Thou shalt not commit stealing. Thou shalt not bear false witness. 
Thou shalt not covet. And a new commandment I give unto you this day, that ye will love one another with all your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, I want each one of you to know that we are coming together today. And though it is social distancing and we've had to somewhat uh, curtail how we would normally do things or make some changes, but we're still here to celebrate God and give God glory for these two men of God that have worked so hard down through the years. So can we celebrate God for the work? Come on, let's celebrate God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God. Thank you for God. My brothers, God has chosen you and have appointed you while the people have affirmed their trust in you by acclaiming your appointments. A bishop in God's holy church is called to be one with the apostle in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify of Christ's sovereignty as Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. You're called to guard the faith of the church, the unity and discipline of the church, to celebrate and provide for the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant, to ordain elders and deacons and to join in ordaining bishops and to be all things in a faithful and wholesome example for the entire flock of Christ. With your fellow bishops, Charles and Fabian, you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your calvary is to endure the loneliness of the office, to never require approval, but exercise your duty to act in the best interest of Christ's church. Your joy will be to follow him who came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. In order that we may know your mind and purpose and that ye may be strengthened in your resolve to fulfill your ministry, you must answer the following questions that we put to you. Are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of a bishop in this church? I am persuaded. I am persuaded. this call and fulfill this trust and obedience in Christ and you answer I will obey Christ and will serve in his name. I will obey Christ and serve in his name. Will you be faithful in prayer and in study and in the holy scriptures that you may have mind of Christ my helper. 
Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as uniquely revealing the work of God and containing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do accept them. I do accept them. Will you teach and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God, inaugurated by Jesus Christ, and declare its meaning to the world? You answer, by the help of God. By the help of God. Will you devote yourself to prayer, to reading the Holy Scriptures, and to such studies as it may deepen your faith and increase your love, reverence, and service of God? You answer, I will for the love of God. I will for the love of God. Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ in life and stirring up the conscience, excuse me, of those people? You answer, I will in the power of the Spirit. I will in the power of the Spirit. Will you accept the discipline of the church and faithfully exercise authority within it? I will by the help of God. I will by the help of God. Will you be faithful in ordaining and commissioning those you believe God has called? Will you constantly guide, support, and encourage them and all others who minister in the church? I will by the help of God. Will you continue to fashion your own life and that of your family and household according to the ways of Christ so that you may be wholesome example to all people? God. As a chief elder and pastor, will you encourage and support all baptized people in their gift and ministries, nourish them from the riches of God's grace, pray for them without ceasing, and celebrate them with the sacraments of redemption? Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor, and strangers and defend those who have no help. Let us pray, Almighty God, the eternal God of all grace, who gives us what we desire and what we need, grant you grace and power to perform them, that he may complete the good work he has begun in you through Jesus Christ. All of you that are in attendance, would you please sing? We'll just repeat after me. We believe in one God, the Father of God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son who conceived the Holy Ghost from the birth of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead, ascended on high into heaven sits at the right hand of God the Father. He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the communion of the saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
see the other bishops going down to surround them and to pray over them, even now as we offer them to the Lord. God the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, dwelling on high, but having regard for the lowly. Knowing all things before they come to pass, we give you thanks that from the beginning you have gathered and prepared a people to be heirs of the covenant of Abraham and have raised up prophets, kings, and priests, never leaving your temple unattended. We praise you now, God, that from creation you have graciously accepted the ministry of those whom you've chosen. We thank you now, God, that you've called them to be victorious and triumphant. We thank you, God, that they are covered under the blood from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. We thank you, God, that from this day forward, that God, you will open new doors, that you will make new opportunities for them to give you glory. We thank you, God.
understand how you sophisticated people with all of this education all of this worldly experience can act so unseemly I guess for a moment or two have experienced something Whoa! that said that unseemly, yeah. as long as I'm giving praises to God, yeah. I'll act unseemly. Yeah. I dare you to give God praise. Still been in the way. 
I had a hard time with him today. He tried to stay out of my eyesight because this is such a great anointing. And I wanted, but he's so accustomed to calling the shots technically that it's hard for him to get out of it. But I'll sit on him today so he can get this anointing. <laughs> now through the years, he's been faithful. Yes. He's been trustworthy. Yes. He's been truthful. He's been a supporter of ministry. Yes. And I thank God. I don't have any hesitation when I lay hands on Charles. No hesitation. Have no reservation. Amen. I would do it willingly. Thank you, God. And let me say this. He's been a business designate for two years. Yes. Amen. Two years. Still been on the front lines. Fabian, my son in the gospel, has been with me a long time. Wow. I've had him since he was young. When he used to be down there in D.C., Running, running him, his brother used to have a quartet. They used to go around singing. At that time, Fabian had not yet graduated from thugology. <laughs> but praise be to God, Thank you. when God get a hold of you, yeah, yeah. he can take all that stuff out of the way. Thank you, God. Now I look at him, a prophet, a man of God, travel all over teaching and preaching and he too has been designated way over the required time yes, yes. Amen. and so I don't have any hesitation in laying on hands on both of these brothers in Christ I'll stand with them wholeheartedly I support the presider in picking two worthwhile candidates and consecrated to worthwhile candidates. We're going through the investiture, and I would ask that the presider, along with his assistant, help to row Bishop Charles Blight. I would also ask that brother, that Bishop Cardhill, along with the assistant, help to roll Bishop Fabian Tucker. Now the first, the first item is the cassa. Let me tell you how to do that on him, on him. Put the cassa up. Behind him, behind him, yes. Now he slips his coat off. And, and slip the cast off on. Where is... May you all help him. You're supposed to be putting that on him. Don't look for him to put it on. You, you all are vesting him. Okay, don't be afraid of him. Now, I need you over here to help the bishop. The kassa is the foundation garment of the bishop over which all other garments are laid. It is a close-fitting garment reaching to the feet and may be worn by all ordained clergy as a symbol of a servant. The bishop wears the kassa in accordance with the Lord's instructions. Whosoever will be among you, let him first be attended. Matthews 20 and 27. Both of these colors you see are purple. One is a magenta purple. Next is the 
Roche, French word, Roche. Is a white garment with full sleeves. Oh, well, let's put the central on first. Gold chain and/or the gold cord is a 
symbol of endurance, which emphasizes that the bearer is not a novice. Receive this cross, the sign of salvation, and may you never be ashamed to confess to faith Christ crucified, risen, ascended, and glorified. It's a symbol of authority. It is worn on the right hand. The right hand represents God-given authority. Just as Christ sits on the right hand of God, it represents the marriage between Christ and the church. And in the sign of induction into the College of Bishops in the Lord's Church, take this ring. Be merciful in your exercise of authority and be faithful to the pride of the church. The coat. The coat is an evolution of the Campanegra, the cape, which was worn by all clergy as an outdoor a covering of protection of the other sacred garments. Prior to the 8th century, there was no liturgical significance for the Pope. But during the Reformation, it became the garment of choice for processions instead of the chastity. is another symbol of the bishop's authority. The two distinct peaks signify cloven tongues of fire which descends on the head of the apostles on the day of Pentecost. The two streams represent two tables of the Lord.
That's why you notice the hook always stays to the outside so they can hook their neck and pull in. When the enemy can rough, hook in, pull in. When things get out of hand, hook in, pull in. As they turn around, face you once more, the Bishop Charles Blight, the Bishop Fabian Tucker. They now will mount the pulpit, and each one will have words for the congregation. United Fellowship of Churches International. Bless you, bless you, sir. And I will serve the leader bless you, bless you. with everything that we have in the son of the apostle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we are excited. I'm just overwhelmed. God has just been so good to me. Amen. What the enemy meant for me. <laughs> God has already Come turned on. it around for my good. Amen. Yes. And so I'm excited for this new season and this elevation that God has raised, not only myself, but Bishop Charles, amen, my brother, amen. I'm excited for the kingdom purpose and destiny that's before us in United Fellowship Churches. Amen, somebody. Amen. Eyes haven't seen, that's what the scripture says, but I'm declaring today, my God, the eye is seen. Ear hasn't heard, but I declare to you. Fellowship of Churches and 
International because the pathway has already been set. God bless you. Today we are just like Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was indeed good for us uh -huh. to have been here. Yeah. So as we celebrate God again, amen, we honor the Lord for our chief apostle. Let's give God praise for him. No one can cut a pen. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. And to all of the support staff that's here, Amen. we thank you so very much. This is what I need each one of you to do. I want you next week, starting on August the 19th through the 22nd, will be our annual Holy Convocation. You're going to see this aired and edited, and you're going to be glad that you were able to be here. So we thank God for each one of you. And let us receive the benediction, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before the throne of grace. Be dominion and power, will pence work now and forever. The people of God will say amen. As our newly appointed bishops retire, we will follow. Let's give God praise again. Praise the Lord.